Hello, my name is Ernest Dickerson, and I am here to talk about The Invisible Ray, starring Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi. Universal Pictures made a fortune in the early 1930s with their horror franchises, Frankenstein and Dracula, which made stars out of Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff. When the horror genre was at its height, the studio decided to pair the two stars together in three films that contain some of their best, most interesting work. The Black Cat, The Raven, and in 1935, The Invisible Ray. This film is grand, old-school science fiction thriller, a lot of fun to watch, but full of questionable science. The idea of a telescope able to capture light rays projected from Earth millions of light years out in space to look into our past is a great storytelling idea, but full of huge gaping holes. Also, at one point in the story, the identity of a murderer is revealed by photographing the image off of the dead man's eye of the last thing he saw before he died. This is the kind of science in, that used to be in some of the weird tales pulp magazines in the 1930s. And this movie is full of it, and that's what makes it so much fun to watch. We also get the chance to see the great Bela Lugosi in a totally different role than what he was most known for. Karloff had more of an opportunity to stretch out as an actor, but poor Bela did not have that chance. In this movie, we glimpse what he was capable of, and it's fascinating to watch. And Karloff, I feel, is one of the great underrated actors in films. He did some great work throughout his career, but it was always a pleasure to see him and Lugosi in the same film. If they were in career competition, as has been suggested, you cannot tell here because they complement each other brilliantly as two actors working at the top of their game. Apparently, The Invisible Ray was the most profitable of the Karloff Lugosi horror films, but it lost money because of the great John Fulton's visual effects, of which there were plenty. <laughs> Boris Karloff, billed simply as Karloff in the credits, plays visionary astronomer Dr. Janos Ruch, who has invented a telescope that can look deep into space to capture light rays traveling from Earth and use them to look into Earth's past history. We'll be caught here and electrically transferred to the projector in my laboratory. From Andromeda? Using his super telescope, Ruch projects the Earth's past on the planetarium-like dome of his laboratory, showing how a billion years ago, a large meteorite smashed into the continent of Africa. Power to destroy. The spectators are amazed at what they see and invite the now vindicated Ruch to join them on an expedition to Africa to find the site of the meteor's impact. And they do. And everyone I touch is poisoned. Rook finds the meteorite, but is contaminated by its alien radiation, now dubbed Radium X. This causes him to glow in the dark, and his mere touch can kill instantly any living thing. It also starts to drive him into insanity and murder. And then the horror begins. This film allows Lugosi to play a heroic figure, which he was not often allowed to do. His Dr. Benet is dedicated to using Radium X to cure diseases, and for a while, he is the only person that Ruth can trust with his deadly secret. That is, other than his mother, beautifully played by Violet Kemble Cooper. Invisible Ray's director was Lambert Hillier, and one of the films he directed was Dracula's Daughter in 1936, which has since become a cult classic. <laughs> 